September 4th, 2011. Police in Tame, Oxfordshire, in England, received a call from a concerned member of the public, asking them to go to Ireton Court. Please, please, my neighbour, this man is beating the crap out of this woman and they've got kids. Sorry I'm shaking because my next door neighbour's getting beaten up bad, the caller said. When the emergency services arrived on scene, what they found was nothing short of a nightmare. Michaela Hall was born on the 7th of February 1983 to her mother Julie. Michaela was an only child and she and her mother were inseparable. Julie worked hard as a single mother to give Michaela the best start in life and they spent all their time together. Michaela grew into a happy and confident young woman with a close group of friends with whom she enjoyed going out. Michaela would go on to marry a local Oxford man but it would later fall apart and the pair would split. This was an extraordinarily difficult time for Michaela, trying to adjust to the end of the relationship. One of Michaela and Julie's favourite things to do would be to go on holiday to Turkey. During one of these trips, Julie met a man called Mehmet Sahin. Mehmet said he knew instantly that she was the one for him. After falling in love, the pair were wed in 2002, and Mehmet moved to the UK to live in Oxford with his wife and stepdaughter. In 2007, Michaela went to Turkey again. It was here that she met a waiter who worked at the resort, a man called Ensar Gol. They soon began a relationship and she quickly fell for him, returning to Turkey not long after to see him again. After coming back to the UK a couple of weeks later, Michaela found out she was pregnant. She was determined to make the relationship a success and couldn't wait to meet her baby. The pair had a long-distance relationship, and she would travel to Turkey every few months to see Ansar. In 2008, they welcomed their first child, a daughter. Just a few weeks after the birth, she discovered she was pregnant again, and the couple had a baby boy the following year. Being a mother was everything to Michaela. Her friend described her son and daughter as being her right and left arm. Julie also adored her grandchildren, and absolutely doted on them. After the births of their children, the true nature of Ansar's personality would start to come through. He exhibited extremely controlling and possessive behaviours. When she was in Turkey, he would tell her where she could and couldn't go, and what she could and couldn't do. Even when she went back to the UK, he would continue to control her despite him being in Turkey. Michaela wanted her children to have their father in their lives, and she wanted him to come to the UK so they could be together and try and make their relationship work. Being a working mother with two young children meant life was busy and money was tight for Michaela, but determined to make it work, she would spend a lot of money flying out to Turkey to see Ansar, sometimes taking the children with her and other times leaving them in the care of her mother, as Ansar did not like to share attention with the children. He would take advantage of how giving she was, and her finances would take a massive hit because of this. She would buy him gifts in the UK and send them out to him. According to those that knew the couple, while he was still out in Turkey, his relationship with Michaela didn't matter to him, and he continued to have sexual relations with other women. The abuse in the relationship would start to escalate. When Michaela went out to Turkey with the children to see him, Julie had also gone, and she remained at the hotel to look after her grandchildren. Michaela and Ansar had returned in the early morning hours, and an argument broke out in the kitchen. As he began to raise his voice, Michaela told him to be quiet because the children were asleep and she did not want them to be woken up. Ansar then raised his fist and went to strike Michaela. Julie stepped in between them and tried to stop him, but he shoved her out of the way and then struck Michaela. Julie told friends that when she looked in his eyes, she thought he wanted to kill her. After having a bad feeling about him for so long, This incident only made Julie's hatred for him grow. Michaela continued to hold on to the hope that once he left Turkey and moved to the UK to settle with her and the children, 
that their relationship would start to get better, but more problems would arise. Ensar had absconded from Turkey's national service, and he was not allowed to move to the UK until he had completed this, and his visa was put on hold. Michaela spent significant amounts of money trying to go through various channels to help him. He finally agreed to take part in his national service, after it became clear that this was his only option and the only way he was going to get his visa. But this led to further problems. He blamed Michaela for having to do his national service, even though it was completely out of her control. In December 2010, as he was doing his national service, without warning and with no reason given, he ended his relationship with her. Michaela was devastated. She began talking to an ex from Turkey and decided to go out there to see him, but later said she had made a mistake in seeing the ex, adding that she should have been trying to patch things up with Ensar and make their relationship work. She returned to the UK and, in a panic, had her friends help her erase and remove any trace of her being in contact with her ex, knowing that if Ensar found out, he would likely explode. A few days later, Michaela received a call. It was Ensar, acting like nothing had happened. They agreed to give their relationship another go, but her friends urged her to reconsider and not get back together with him. But she decided she was going to give it another go. In March 2011, she travelled to Turkey, and the pair got married. Julie refused to go. Michaela had also not told her friends that they were getting married, with some finding out via Facebook when Julie posted a congratulatory message to the couple. Michaela flew back to Britain and began working to get her new husband a visa. However, he soon found out that she had previously gone back to Turkey to see her ex, and this enraged him. He would become even more verbally abusive when they spoke. This would often reduce her to tears, and her friends would also hear the verbal abuse, telling her that this was not normal behaviour and he shouldn't be treating her that way. He continued to spam her phone with calls, even throughout the night, calling 26 times on one occasion in August 2011, leaving her feeling incredibly depressed, with a friend saying she was even contemplating suicide. Her friend told her she needed to turn her phone off. The following day, Michaela heard that his visa had been approved and was on his way to be delivered to him, the day after, Ensar Gol boarded a flight to the UK and left Turkey. He lived with Michaela and their children at Julian Mehmet's house in Tame, Oxfordshire. The tensions would soon start to come to the surface. Julie's hatred of Ensar was reciprocated, with him loathing how close she was to her daughter. Other people in Michaela's life would see his deeply controlling and abusive nature, with him telling one of her friends that Michaela would always be his. His hatred for Julie and living in her house, coupled with his desire for revenge after finding out Michaela had met with an ex after he had ended their relationship without warning, began to boil away inside him. In a conversation with Mehmet, Ensar said he felt like killing Michaela, but Mehmet believed he was just saying things in anger, not actually meaning it. One morning... Michaela called one of her friends. She was extremely fearful and frightened, as Ensar had told her that if she returned home, he would cut her head off. Just two weeks after he arrived in England, a plane ticket was bought for him to go back to Turkey permanently. Michaela was devastated and begged him again for a final chance to make it work. As he was on his way to the airport, he decided to abandon the flight and return to the family home. On September 2nd, he slept with a woman from a local bar, again showing no interest in his wife or his marriage. The following day, September the 3rd, Ensar slept with the woman again and also consumed a significant amount of alcohol, as well as missing his shift at the local Prezzo restaurant. He then went to the takeaway that Mehmet worked at at 1.15am on the morning of September the 4th and asked him if something were to happen to Michaela and Julie what would happen to the children? Mehmet believed this was nothing more than the alcohol talking. 
at 2.10am and Sargol returned to Ireton Court. Julie and a friend Casey were watching television in the living room while Michaela slept upstairs with their daughter in the room and their son in the room next door. Ensar headed into the kitchen and took a knife from one of the drawers before going upstairs. As he went into the bedroom where his wife and daughter slept, it was here that he launched a terrifying attack, stabbing Michaela repeatedly. Julie and Casey ran upstairs to see what the commotion was. When Julie got to the bedroom, she found Ensar straddling Michaela as he stabbed her in the neck. As she tried to pull him off of her, she slipped and fell onto the floor. Ensar then turned his attention to her, repeatedly stabbing her as he had done to Michaela. Casey was also stabbed four times, with one of the knife wounds missing her pulmonary vein by a matter of millimetres. Casey was able to escape the house and run, but Julie wasn't. As she tried to get to the door, she collapsed at the bottom of the stairs the catastrophic blood loss making her unable to carry on. Ensar Gol then took their three-year-old daughter and headed off into the night. After hearing the screams, a worried neighbour immediately called the police and before long emergency services were on scene, Casey was taken to John Radcliffe Hospital where she would eventually make a recovery. Julie was found in a fetal position just inches away from the door. Michaela was found in the bedroom. The hunt was now on to find Ansar Gol. He was seen on CCTV walking down a street, holding his infant daughter in his arms. He was still carrying the knife he had used in the murders, and his clothes had blood spatter on them. He walked to the pizza place where Mehmet worked and shouted, No one believed me, but I've done it. I've butchered them both. He then put his daughter down on the ground and told Mehmet to take care of her. Mehmet did everything he could to comfort the shaking and traumatised little girl, whilst also calling 999. As he walked around, Ensar called his family in Turkey. A man was seen on CCTV footage walking up to him to ask him for a cigarette lighter, but he immediately walked away after seeing Ensar holding the knife. The CCTV also captured the moment Ensar Gol was taken into custody by two police officers. He told the officers, yes, I killed them, but you don't know why. Senior Investigating Officer Detective Chief Inspector Joe Kidman would later praise the police officers who had arrested him as they were unarmed, saying they showed great bravery and composure. As he was being questioned, he complained about the blood on his clothes and showed little to no care about what he had just done. Just three hours before committing the murders, He sent a message to his cousin on Facebook saying, Have a look. All the English papers will talk of me tomorrow. The crazy Turk wolf who covered London in blood. The knife is ready. You know I'm handy with a knife. Good with knives. Postmortems were carried out on Julie and Michaela and it was determined that most of the stab wounds had been to the chest and neck, leading to extensive blood loss. Julie was stabbed more than 50 times and Michaela suffered more than 40 stab wounds. This had all happened in front of their three-year-old daughter, with their two-year-old son in the next room. Ensargol was charged with the murder of his wife and mother-in-law, and the attempted murder of Casey. He was scheduled to appear at Oxford Magistrates Court that Tuesday, and he entered a plea of not guilty to all charges.
May 2012. It was now time for Ensar Gol to stand trial. His behaviour was shocking. He was photographed going into court, grinning for the photographers. He laughed and smiled as he sat in the dock, showing no remorse or regret for taking the lives of two people and ruining the lives of so many others. He argued that he had been trapped in the marriage and that he didn't love Michaela. But his behaviour had shown he was more than happy to string Michaela along if it meant he could benefit from it. When it came time for him to testify as to what had happened on the night of September the 4th, he told the court that Julie had been the one to attack him and he had acted in self-defence, at one point taking a pen off of his interpreter and making a stabbing motion before the judge intervened and told him to give the pen back to the interpreter. He said that he had been unhappy in his marriage and that he had felt forced to marry Michaela. The argument that he had acted in self-defence did not stand up. The amount of stab wounds that Michaela and Julie had suffered went way beyond what a reasonable person could consider self-defence. The work done by the police and the prosecution blew his self-defence story apart. The scene of the crime, the blood pattern analysis and the damage done to the furniture painted a very different picture that he had been the one to attack Michaela and Julie and not the other way around. Michaela and Julie's loved ones sat in the public gallery and cried as the CCTV footage of him walking through the town, still holding the knife, was played. The prosecution lawyer, Daffith Enoch, told the courtroom that the marriage between the pair had been an unhappy one, compounded by the fact that Ensar missed Turkey, but he added that neither one of these things could excuse or explain why he had done what he had done, something he called the senseless slaughter born out of premeditated, ruthless violence. Richard Rook from the South Central Ambulance Service testified at the trial, saying he would never forget the look in Michaela's eyes, saying it was one of suffering and pain, a look he would take with him to the grave. Casey also testified, saying she had rushed upstairs with Julie after hearing the commotion. She added that testifying in court was the hardest thing she had ever had to do. May 31st, 2012. The jury returned their verdict. Ensar Gol was found guilty of the attempted murder of Casey and the murders of Julie and Michaela. He was sentenced to life in prison with 36 years for each murder and 12 for the charge of attempted murder, with these sentences running concurrently. The judge told him, I have no doubt that you intended to kill your wife Michaela and your mother-in-law Julie. These brutal murders were planned and premeditated. You say you were unhappy here and didn't get on with your mother-in-law. I totally reject any suggestion that anything she said or did provides you with any mitigation. The pain and suffering you have caused to the family will plainly be long-lasting and with them for the remainder of their lives. Ensar nodded and smiled as the sentence was given. As he was led out of the dock, Ensar began to smile, laughing and pointing at himself as he mouthed, me, me, me. For the loved ones left behind, they said no sentence would ever be enough. Mehmet said, I met Julie when I was 23 years old, and I was so lucky to have 12 years with the one and only love of my life. I know that she loved me as much as I loved her. He also said that he was glad the jury had seen through what was being said about Julie during the trial and the way she had been characterised by the defence's case, with them arguing that she had been the one to instigate it. Following Ansar's conviction, Detective Chief Inspector Joe Kidman said, In trying to evade responsibility for his crimes, Ansar Gold sought to attack the character of these two women he had murdered. This has only added to the terrible ordeal of the family who have attended each day and listened to all the evidence. Despite their anguish, they have shown great dignity throughout. The devastation caused on the night of September the 4th is difficult to comprehend. For the ones left behind, the pain is unimaginable. Mehmet said, There's a great big void in my life now. Two children are left without a grandma, a mother and a father. He took everything. I didn't know till then 
that they were my only reason to live, my only joy in life. If you have been affected by any of the issues raised in today's case, we have left links to further resources in the description box below. For those of you that like to listen on the go, we now have our episodes in podcast form and you can now find this via the link in our description box or by searching Truly Criminal Podcast on your podcasting platforms.